guys welcome to my channel I just want to do a quick video on migration if you need to contact me for any product or supplies you can email me if you have any questions as well I have a hyaluron guide that is now available for information on the hyaluron pen if you need any help whether you're already a practitioner you're doing it yourself if you're learning the pen or you already know the pen if you need to refresh your memory if you're not sure about it if you're feeling a little hesitant to use your pen this book is for you there's everything you need to know in the book a to z i have all the questions that have ever come up in the past two years in this book i've literally taken all the information i can gather and put this together for you and for anyone who's using the hyaluron pen it's the one and only handbook out there for the hyaluron device so you can reach me at lc at hyaluron queen with the k.com if you're interested i wanted to do this video because migration is talked about a lot when it comes to hyaluronic acid and the reason we get migration is due to the viscosity of the filler or the technique that's used with hyaluronic acid when we're placing the filler. It can happen with needle methods or it can happen with the hyaluron device. I'm not gonna discuss the needle methods. Obviously, I don't use the needle methods because Hyaluron Queen is specifically with no needles. Everything I talk about and use is needle-free. I don't use needles in any of my treatments. I concentrate on needle-free methods, skin treatments. I'm going to discuss the hyaluron device today because this is what I use and the reason we would have migration with the hyaluron device is number one will be product selection. Product selection is very important when you're using the hyaluron device and that is because if you choose the wrong product, meaning if the viscosity of the product is too low, that means the product will be thin and it's going to migrate into other areas, other areas that might cause a dysmorphic effect it might leak into unwanted areas and it will cause an uneven look it will be unpleasant to look at and it's a challenge to treat number two it can also a thinner viscosity or lower viscosity hyaluronic acid will also disappear quite quickly so you also will not have the lasting results that you would want to achieve when we're injecting it's something that we want to see last, especially if we're using it for volume. We want to see the product last under the skin. And if it's a low viscosity, that means the cross link in the ingredient is very low. So you will not have lasting results. That's one reason that you wouldn't want to have too low of a viscosity when it comes to product, because the product will migrate into other areas and you won't have a lasting result. So that's one reason you'll have migration in the skin when it comes to wrong product choice. Another reason that you'll have migration of product in your skin is technique. Your technique and your skill. Your technique is very important. I'm gonna take my gold bar here and show you something on the lip. So when we're injecting lips, for example, when you're injecting the lip, if you pass the vermilion border over here, if you go outside the vermilion border, it's a very big possibility that the product will migrate outside of the lip on the outer part of the vermilion border around the lip and that will create a duck look effect or fish lip, some people call it. And that is because you have seeped out of the vermilion border and the product will start to head upwards. This happens because of product placement. So it's very important that when you're doing a lip, that even if you want to inject along the vermilion border because you want to add to the pout and create a more fuller volume effect and create a more pouty look and bring out the lip to create a more poutier look and bring it outwards, you still want to inject coming towards. You want to inject just one millimeter, very, very slightly into the vermilion border, not on the outside. You just want to make sure you're like a half a millimeter into the vermilion border, onto the lip. Make sure you're on the pink part of the lip into the vermilion border, unless you're treating smoker lines then you have to be very careful not to over inject. 
you want to make sure to treat the lip first because usually if it's a smoker line smoker lines will come from loss of volume in the lip to start with so you're going to lose the volume and then the lips begin to shrink and it starts to create those vertical lines around the lips which we call smokers lines even if you're not a smoker can come from sipping straws uh, expressions etc so you have to be very careful when you're treating a lip for migration because of that number two reason when you're placing a product in the lip that it would migrate into another area and cause a dysmorphic effect or the fish lip duck lip look is because somebody already has big lips or wants too much product in one session and the practitioner you on yourself or on your client agree to put too much product so if somebody comes in and they want two three ml at one shot sometimes you might decide as a practitioner you need to be the professional or even for yourself decide and say you know what it's better i do this in two or three sessions take it slow and easy you're better off to take it long slower and in multiple sessions to add rather than do it in one shot because you're going to fill it too quickly and the product will then have nowhere to go and it's going to migrate up into the skin and create again that fish look it's going to go up into here so when you see that around the lip over here often it's because the person over injected in one shot so the, the lip got full it had nowhere to go so it began to migrate upwards that can happen as well because let's say if you have small lips 2 ml is too much product to fit into a small lip in one shot the lip needs time to expand, the skin needs time to adjust around the product and to expand large enough to accept the new size. I usually suggest adding maximum one ml at a time. They can always come back in two, three weeks from then and add another ml, that's not a problem, but you're better off like that because that way the skin tissues have time to expand and adjust around the new product and the volume that you've now given it. So that way in two weeks time, they've adjusted and settled in. Even a month is perfect because it takes about a month for hyaluronic acid, especially if you're going big, you're best off to wait a month. If you're going large from a small lip to a large lip, if a dramatic change is wanted, you're best to wait a month because it takes about a month for hyaluronic acid to really settle in and mesh with your skin cells. So you're best off to wait about a month if you want a dramatic change because that way you know that the product's already meshed in and settled in and then you can add your second ml or your third ml and you know that the product's not going to migrate back up into other areas you know that the product has settled in it has a home and now you're going to just add to that and then your skin's going to stretch out and accept the product as something new your skin will stretch because skin is stretchy and it won't be too much because you're only adding in one ml at a time so it's not going to just back up and create a fish look so these are reasons that you might have migration another thing i wanted to mention was even if you wait four to six months or eight months for your filler refill appointment or to change brands not everyone's body absorbs the filler the same way so even after four months six months eight months and you go in for your touch-up or your refill or if you're thinking that the old filler has disappeared, product does not disappear. It actually absorbs into your skin. So there's still product from the last time in your skin, especially if you're touching up and you're a previous filler or someone who's been getting fillers for a long time. If you're just going in for a touch up, if you're someone like me who's been filling your lips for years and then you decide to go to a new product, the old product's still in the skin. So touching it up or topping it off or going in for your refill four to six months later is still the same thing as trying a new product. If you're putting a different product, a new brand into your skin, you're putting the new brand on top of the old brand. So it just goes to show you that there's no problem with putting the other brand, mixing it in with the old brand because everybody's body absorbs it differently. So there's no saying how long the body is gonna hold that hyaluronic acid in it everybody absorbs it differently everybody's skin is different depends on your metabolism how fast your, your body metabolizes it and absorbs the product because we all know the longer that we do fillers and the more often you do them 
for those of you who are used to doing fillers, the product lasts longer. So like even if I go touch up my, my lips every four to six months, my lips are still big. I'm just topping them off. When I'm touching them up, my old filler is still there. Just like when I switched from the needle method to Hyaluron Queen, when I started using the Hyaluron device and I switched to my brand Hyaluron Queen, back when I was using the needle method, I was using Juvederm and Restylane in my lips with my doctor. I switched over to my brand Hyaluron Queen. There was no transition. There was no weight. I just automatically put the product into my lips without worry because hyaluronic acid is hyaluronic acid. The only difference was the viscosity of it and the way that it was inserted into the skin. At the, the rate that the body absorbs the hyaluronic acid, it all depends on your body. Everybody's different. It depends on lifestyle. It depends on the way your body absorbs it. Some people have more expression than others. It depends if a frequent user of Botox because Botox will help your fillers last longer, especially if you're doing it in the area like 11s or the forehead. If you're using Botox, obviously the it's going to help your hyaluronic acid last longer. And if you don't, it's going to fade away quicker because those muscles are being used and it's going to be active and move the area more. Lips last a little bit less because the lips move more than other parts of the face, so the lips will tend to fade a little bit quicker. That's why Hyaluron Queen, if you're wondering how long they last, usually lips are four to six months and the face is six to eight months. And that's because the lips move a lot more than the face, so the lips have a little bit less longevity than the face. Product selection is extremely important when you are using the Hyaluron Pen. You have the same problems when you're using needles, Doctors have it all the time. Product migration when you're using hyaluronic acid can happen to anyone. It is an issue that can arise with the product itself. So it's not just hyaluron pen problem. It is a problem with hyaluronic acid that the practitioner needs to know about. It's the product selection and it's the technique. So as long as you know that, don't fill too much in one time and choose your viscosity carefully. A thinner viscosity might be good if you're a beginner, that's great, but if you're going to use a thinner viscosity, again, don't overfill. A thinner viscosity, if you want to go with one, that's fine, but it's not something you want to add in like 2-3 ml into one area, definitely not, because if you add 2-3 ml into a lip, it's definitely going to migrate into other areas. If you're adding too much volume into a cheek with a thin viscosity, it's definitely going to migrate. So. You want to make sure that the viscosity is not too thin if you're going to be adding volume. If you're doing it for restoration, if you're doing it for rejuvenation or hydration, that's okay. You can use a lower volume because you're not going to add too much. You're really just doing it for restoration. But if you're actually doing it for volume and you're going to be adding more than 1 ml, you want to make sure to go with a little bit of a higher viscosity just to be sure that the product won't migrate to other unwanted areas. So it's something to consider when you're working, but also don't forget you need to consider when you're using the Hyaluron pen that it does function with pressure and the pressure cannot puncture the skin and transfer the product very well if the viscosity is too high. The higher viscosity hyaluronic acids are meant for the older traditional needle methods. So we can't forget that if you're going to use the Hyaluron pen, that you need to use something kind of in between. Hyaluron Queen has been formulated for the Hyaluron pens. I have one viscosity only, and that's because it is formulated for the device, can be used with the needle method, of course. The viscosity has been designed for the pen, for easy transfer into the skin and lasting results. So you're gonna have both with my filler because there's so many on the market with so many different viscosities and brands and it makes it really difficult for people to choose what to use and which viscosity, fine or deep, or what to use in what area and whether it's gonna migrate or whether it's gonna stay, whether you're gonna have product loss when it's too thick or if it's gonna penetrate, if you're going to migrate somewhere else and all these decisions you have to make when you are choosing a filler for your Hyaluron pen because when you're using a needle method you don't have to worry about all these type of things about it penetrating into the skin and causing lumps and things like this because 
the needle method is a little bit different when you're using thick hyaluronic acid you can also get lumps and bumps and that's not pleasant to deal with either that's a whole other video on its own we'll discuss that another time hyaluron queen has been formulated for the pen so it's going to be easy to transfer with lasting results and the viscosity has been specific for that and can be used anywhere on the skin so if you need any product, if you need any help, have any questions, Hyaluron Queen Guide is for you. And you can reach me for any of that. Contact me. Feel free to ask questions. I'm there for you at any time. You can email me at lc at hyaluron-queen with a k.com. And I hope you are all staying safe and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Bye.